so hello guys uh, welcome to our uh, next video in the playlist uh, google earth engine for the land cover applications so in today's video we are going to assess how we can go for the accuracy assessment of the supervised classification so in our previous video we have covered how to do a supervised classification in the google earth engine with the valid training inputs so this is video is the continuation of the previous video as a one step ahead of how to calculate the su uh, accuracy and uh, how we can derive the kappa coefficient and how we can interpret it in the google earth engine so if you have not watched the previous video i recommend you to please watch the previous video it's the continuation of the next video so uh, if you don't have the code to the earlier link you can just go to our youtube channel uh, gis and uh, google earth engine so this is our previous video of supervised classification using the random forest algorithm so just expand the description box here you will get a code link click it on it so directly uh, our uh, previous tutorial is loading here so in the previous video we have covered the supervised classification with the four classes as build up agriculture lands water and barren land so our code is running automatically because we have provided the link in the description box so here you can see uh, much of the agriculture land uh, ha uh, is observed in our area of interest and uh, we have the river networks with the blue in color and uh, this gray color represents uh, the build up lands and uh, this yellow color represents the barren land so until this we have covered in our previous class and uh, let's start now with the accuracy assessment so i'm just adding a comment here as a accuracy assessment so the first basic step in order to start uh, the accuracy assessment is that the training features which we have created earlier so if you can just scroll up here you have the training features we need to split this into two columns as a testing features as well as the training feature so between these two the uh, algorithm or the error matrix will compute how much correctness is there between the classes which we have given in the training inputs and what the classification has done uh, by the smile random forest algorithm so let's split it give the variable called training testing is equal to so our uh, training features which we have created earlier so be careful about the spellings guys dot uh, random so dot random is the function which we are using uh, dot random column uh, for creating a random column for this training feature and uh, we have in it as random and we are creating next variable called training set is equal to uh, from this training testing I am splitting it uh, with the help of filter function dot filter ee dot uh, filter dot uh, less generic dot less than let's say lte function from this random column 70% so I am taking 70% of the training features uh, for training the classifier and the remaining 30% for testing it so it's purely a random uh, criteria so we have the testing set again split from this training testing uh, feature use the filter column filter function and uh, this is the function a dot filter greater than function this time and uh, give the column name as random point cell so our training test uh, testing set and the training set both are complete now we have it ready and uh, now go for the training of uh, our uh, data set so let's uh, create a variable called for accuracy uh, we are going for classifier so we are using the same classifier which we have used earlier ee dot uh, classifier uh, here you see we have uh, smile random forest uh, simply is random forest and here smile random forest is there 
you can give the 500 as the number of trees for decision making which is also called as a decision trees and uh, train the classifier so it's asking for some of the arguments open the flower brackets because it should be in a dictionary so the features uh, must be our training set it means 70% of the training features and class property should be class so this should be in a square brackets and input properties are our prediction bands from the sentinel2 image so all these variables we have created earlier in our previous class so i recommend you to watch that video and come to this video after watching that so now we have classified our uh, data set uh, using the training set now it's time to apply this for our testing set so create a function called accuracy classified so select this uh, testing set for this testing set i'm applying the classify function Uh, as our accuracy classifier so here we are comparing our testing set which contain our training input classes as an input and our accuracy classifier which has already classified and has the classification as a training input so let's create a one more variable called accuracy so this will be our final variable and uh, I'm using the function ee dot uh, confusion matrix uh, for the accuracy classified variable, which is our previous variable, and uh, use the function error matrix. And uh, it is asking for some arguments. It's asking which is the actual class. Uh, it is our class only, and uh, predicted is our classification. So simply close the brackets so now our accuracy variable is ready it's ready for the print and it display the results so let's print it print accuracy dot again the accuracy function is used in order to get the overall accuracy percentage so rename it as overall accuracy and uh, give another print for this accuracy with the kappa value so rename it as kappa coefficient i hope you know what is kappa coefficient and how it works if not uh, i will tell you in the brief once the results print so we have an error where the accuracy classified is not defined i think uh, yeah we have spelling mistake here and it's done r sorry we have one more error let's see okay it should be a string it's asking that a dot train class property should be a string but the actual value are in list so i have to delete this square brackets let's give it a run again yeah oh here you see the accuracy is one because i have taken much of the classifier into uh, training features into our training set so let's modify this let's take 0.5 percent 50 50 for training and 50 for uh, so still our accuracy is one uh, it's okay so if you have more kind of training inputs i have given only 7 5 13 3 uh, because of that it's coming uh, overall accuracy of one so i have told in the previous video that we should have a more kind of training inputs uh, and uh, as much as you are you have your training inputs the classification would be better so uh, that's it for today guys uh, so if you have any kind of queries you can post in the comment section 
so anything which is better than 0.8 is okay to carry on the further analysis so if you can give more number of training inputs try using uh, will give you more number of training inputs and uh, uh, check for the accuracy assessment uh, surely uh, you will not get the hundred percent you will get uh, somewhere around 80 to 90 percent so uh, that's it for today guys uh, if you have any kind of doubts you can post in the comment section as always uh, thank you for watching